Welcome to College Talk Tuesday. We are live and streaming like we've never streamed before. Pearl Lockwood. Hi, everybody. Andy Lockwood. Hi. And yeah, we're here talking about college stuff, talking about college scholarships, financial aid, getting into college, college prep, like ACT prep and SAT prep. And, you know, if you're just joining us, please pop a little comment in in the comment section to say hi. Let us know that uh, you're here and you can hear and see us in all of our streaming glory. And if you have any question that's related to any of the above, any college stuff, uh, definitely pop it in there too because we always get in there and answer them. At least I do. Uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> At least one Very of good. us does. Yes. So Pearl, uh, we're going to talk today about a couple of things. Uh, some stuff is geared toward class of 2018 juniors, mm -hmm. uh, including ACT and SAT prep and college visits, although college visits I think could also cover some seniors, Definitely. like, because we have one. We do. Are you still going this weekend on a college visit um, for our senior? We haven't touched on the subject again okay. since we discussed it yesterday, but right. uh, I, I don't know. There was some vague talk in the household about college visits for our senior to visit at one of his top choice school that he got into. So, uh, and I think we should also spend a little bit of time again discussing for class of 2017 mm -hmm. their awards that are coming in, and you know some like them, mm -hmm. some don't like the awards, and, and how to improve them. Yeah, and also just clear up some of the confusion on the process altogether. Um, well, let's start off, again, if you're just joining us, say hi in the comments section. It's College Talk Tuesday, every Tuesday, 11.30 p.m., I'm sorry, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, well, we could do a p.m. show, too. I mean, during the season, I think we'd probably get a lot of viewers you know, <laughs> at, at night, a lot of stressed out parents. Right. But if you are, uh, you know, uptight, stressed out uh, mom or dad, and you just feel confused because you're getting a bunch of uh, misinformation or too much information. Or too much information or fake information um, about, you know, how to get into college, how to get scholarships, how to get financial aid, where to apply, what the hot schools are, what are not. A lot of parents kind of chit-chat among right. each other. The parents' uh, chit-chat is similar to, like, fake how news. fake news or how true someone's life is as represented on Facebook, for example. Hmm. Hmm. You mean where everybody gets into their top choice schools? That too, or they can portray things as they wish. You know, that's the conversation that parents with diff you know are chatting about, and how much that bears <sighs> resemblance with the truth. So, so what, one of the things that <laughs> I, I haven't said in a while, uh, because Pearl doesn't like me to say this, is that I remember last year when a lot of our uh, senior clients and friends were posting all the schools that they got into, and hey, you know, so and so got into Emory, and woo, you know, all that stuff. And our, and our son, uh, we, we have four kids, and our son Jack, who was a junior at the time, and I like to refer to him all the time as, our, as the worst walking advertisement for our business, mm -hmm. because he just isn't necessarily, although he's changed a little bit, but he's not necessarily the most academically motivated guy in mm -hmm. stuff that he doesn't like to do. So he has other redeeming qualities. This is the module we call acceptance. <laughs> okay. That's not double even, entendre. Not even, well, not even half true. Not even half kidding. I'm actually... Pretty, pretty serious. At, at some point, you do need to see the lump of clay that you have in front of you. We mm. call our clay. loving child, right? Our uh, clay. Our project, as we call it. <laughs> we do call so him anyway, so I was, I was saying to Pearl last year, you know, when we were thinking to ourselves, like, what are we going to be posting next year? <laughs> And I was thinking, I was throwing out, <laughs> out no business. Well, I was th <laughs> right. I was throwing out, I was throwing out ideas like, um, "Hey, Jack's parole officer said he's doing a great job, and he's almost." You know, so, but anyway, but he did, he did get into his top choice school, yeah. And he is what is he five for seven, yeah, or six for eight, yeah. He still uh, has a few more to hear from still, yeah. Okay, but. so you know, so that, then that's the goal. I mean, he's not going to an Ivy League school. We, you know, we don't really. Get, Pearl did. I went to a Little Ivy. Uh, we have a lot of parents who are sort of in the same situations, and you know everyone finds the right place for themselves. Okay. And, and it all depends on what you do with the opportunity once you're there. Whether you're at a fabulous school and you waste the opportunity, or <laughs> well, that a ties less in. competitive school and you put your all into it, and you get everything from relationships with faculty member and relationships with other you know inspired students. It's all of what you make, what you make of it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
you had the right words. They're just yes. a little out of order. So I was going to say yes. that actually ties into the, the third segment. Um, so we're going to be talking about the ACT versus the SAT. We're going to talk about the financial aid and appeals process because mm -hmm. we seem to get a lot of questions about that. We're trying to just give right. the information that we know is uh, kind of pressing and coming into us just from conversations we've had this week. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at my uh, my little iPad here just to say hi to people who have uh, joined us. So please, you know, say hi in, in the comment section. Give us a little shout out. Give us a like, please, or comment, or share, or all three. Or sad. LCS. Oh, don't give us a sad. Is there a sad? There's a sad. Oh. There's a sad. There's okay. a wow. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you think is appropriate. We don't want to micromanage. Angry. Yeah. Even if you're angry. Um, and then the third thing I wanted to talk about, which which is what I was saying, ties in is the hidden place to visit on a college tour. Ooh. You know what that is? I think I do. Okay. We'll see if she can is discover the hidden place. Okay. So, all right, let's talk really quickly about SAT and, and ACT. So, I guess one of the biggest mistakes that we see kids and parents commit is not devoting enough time and attention to it when they have the opportunity or what because they don't think they have the opportunity particularly in junior year because it is so busy but sooner or later you run out of time and you don't want to be in a situation which is avoidable to a large extent of having to take the tests in your senior year as a Hail Mary we've talked about this in many uh, previous episodes about all sorts of things that are out of your control that can go wrong you don't want to leave anything to chance so this year 2017 there is actually a new uh, test date being offered by the SAT, the College Board folks uh, who offer the SAT. Uh, we have several wild animals running I'm around the studio to, here today. I'm going to show our visitor dog. Come here. Well, uh, I don't know if he's... Uh, he's shy. Yeah, he's camera, might be shy. camera shy. Yeah, so we have uh, four kids, uh, two dogs, and my uh, sister-in-law and my niece who are, are living here. And now we added a third dog. Um, which is what I call a girl yeah, dog. This dog is so cute. Okay. All right, let them play. Don't do this. For the love of God. All right. All right. right? Yeah. Thumbs up if this dog is a cutie pie. All That's, right. All right. A little smelly. Just saying. So, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, so, we're, yeah, it's, uh, the studio is no place of, of refuge, apparently. Yeah. Can you guys go upstairs? Are you trained to do that? Go. Run away. Go outside. Go free Timmy down by the well. He fell in. We're like that uh, B BCC uh, reporter. Oh, that's fine with the kids. Yeah. Yeah, because so you affirmatively went and grabbed them. There was no kid who came in. We, yeah. we were, they could go like that to the kids. True. That was, that was funny. So, all right. Anyway, so let's talk about um, the a little bit more about the standardized testing. So, number one, the biggest mistake is just running out of time. So, this summer is a great time to prep if you are a... Uh, a sophomore rising junior, meaning to class of 2019. I think that is the ideal time to start your prep because you can um, be a little more relaxed and spend a little bit of uh, a little more time yeah. over the summer. And then when you get into your fall and your spring of your junior year, maybe you take it another two or three times, uh, and then you're done. That, that's the yeah. that's the ideal game plan if you, if you can do that. Now, if you're a junior and you feel like you know you don't have any time to do anything, um, which, which I know is the case because I sent out an email to my list uh, yesterday because we're offering a two weekend, Saturday, Sunday, each day, ACT cram course. I put the link, if you're local, I, uh, that, that you may want to check that out. We've, I think we have three seats left. It's a very small class. Um, a, lot, a lot of people just have a very hard time finding the time, again, because they're busy with sports, with uh, you know plays and rehearsals and um, regular in-school extracurriculars and out-of-school extracurriculars and community service, volunteering, all that type of stuff. No, no argument for me. It's very hard to find the time to do that. And it, of course, it was nothing like this when we were growing up, right? I mean, the right. kids. And today, one thing I don't think you even mentioned was and homework. Yeah, regular school. Work. Regular, right? Yeah, right. Just keeping up with all that is, yeah. is, is impossible, but. You know, as I, as I said in the email that, that, I, uh, that I, I sent around yesterday, you know, I, I understand being on team is very important and being, you know, going to rehearsals is very important. Um, Pearl is a big uh, drama person, not melodrama. She's a big rehearsal person. You know, I played sports and stuff. But you know what? Neither of us uh, was planning on going pro. 
I'm guessing that's you know kind of the situation that you're in. You know, rehearsals are great, but you're not going to Broadway or Carnegie Hall or whatever. So maybe it's time to take a little bit of a step back if you can. And I know that a lot of coaches don't like that, and uh, you know, directors or whatever. But again, it's it's, it's a Big juggling picture. act. Yeah, like it's a bigger picture. Years. <laughs> right. Don't get long game. Yeah. Don't get mired down in the, in the in the short game because you will run out of time. That's that's the best advice I think that we can give. So um, if, if you are, um, at the very least, you should take, before you figure out which test is right for you, you should take one of these. Do a diagnostic. There's a lot of places that offer free diagnostics. We do that from time to time. You can also um, buy an ACT book of old tests. I think the SAT book, may, I don't know if that's out yet because there's only a, a, a relative handful of new format SATs, but you, you can probably get your hands on an, an old test you know, by big borrowing and stealing or asking your guidance counselor or something like that. But but figure out if you are a junior, if you and you haven't done this yet, figure out which, which test you feel most comfortable with. Um, generally speaking, the ACT has more questions per hour and it's a faster paced test. So if you're not a fast reader, that may not be the best test for you. The SAT might be better. Um, but you have to get your own feel for it. So so don't sh give yourself the short shrift because scores really matter. S colleges look at them they're and, and they're here to stay and, and it helps getting money for colleges, which is why we now offer ACT and SAT tutoring because it ties into everything we do to help people get into college yeah. and to help them get money for college so they can, they can pay discounted prices. So don't run out of time. Allow yourself the time. Right. Okay. Pearl, may I ask you about the what's happening now in the financial aid process for seniors, class 2017, okay. and then, then, I want you to segue into advice for juniors. Okay. Well, uh, 2017 grads. First, I'll clear up what I what I've been gathering is a little confusion about the process. At this point in time. Um, People are, have received many offers from schools that they apply to either early action or early decision, uh, even if rolling. And then some schools who have abided by the policy, which was to try to get these awards out as quickly as possible, which is why they used an already completed tax return base year. Um, that was a change in the, in the FAFSA rules this year. So many people have heard a lot from schools, a lot of awards, a lot of disappointment, was hoping for more money, how could they expect me to think I'm gonna pay for this each year, this amount this year, when I make this? That's a lot of the chatter. Um, and then there's some concern. Well, I haven't heard anything from these three schools, but I've gotten awards from these five, or I only heard merit from this one, but nothing about need-based. So unfortunately, there is no rhyme or reason, there is no uniformity between the schools in terms of how they will let you know what your financial aid package is, when they will let you know what your financial aid package is, whether your need-based financial aid package will be combined with a merit aid award. The answer is yes, yes, and yes, this happens at many, you know, all the schools combined. They, they, there is no one standard way in which they give this information out. So if you are concerned that you haven't heard, of course, as, as a precautionary measure, you can call up the financial aid office at any school you're wondering about and ask, do you have everything that you need for my financial aid application? Is anything missing? Uh, no, oh, when can I expect to hear about my financial aid package? That's it. And, and that you know that's basically where we're at at this point in terms of appeals and appealing these awards and here's another misunderstanding um, some people think you you get some awards and then you start going to each of the schools and asking for more money oh can I have more from you and you from more more for you it, it doesn't really it does not work like that and at least it doesn't work that way not the best practice it is not the best practice um, we recommend you wait until you get all of your awards to make sure, because you usually have, generally speaking, one bite at this apple, to go before you know whoever you're going to appeal it to and give it your best shot. If you don't have every all your 
ducks in a row and all your information back from all the schools, you may send a letter to one place, you know, and then then the next week you get you get a fabulous award. Oh, I wish I told them about that. And then you're going to start and you're going to lose your credibility. You're going to go back and you're going to go back. No. Um, you want to chime in about the uh, how more about how we appeal and what what Do you, you recommend? Me to chime? I don't really. I, you can hear me. No. Just, I mean, you were just so quiet. It was a little off putting. What are you saying? <laughs> well, when you get on your roll and you start using the you know, waving the hands around. That's true. <clears throat> yeah, so th the deal is that the more leverage you have in the form of other offers, the better position you're in in terms of the strength to negotiate. So we like to have all of the other offers in so that you can use them um, to, to get more money. And I would identify the top choice school and go after that school, let that play out, and then keep going from, from there. Either you're done or you, you go to the next top choice school if the numbers don't work for you. Um, May 1st is the housing deadline. It is not too uh, early or too late to be asking for money. It's not even April yet. April is a very busy month for negotiating. So if you haven't started the process yet, that's totally fine because um, the more, you know, the, the, the pressure builds up not only on parents but on schools to fill their, uh, fill their seats. Don't forget their businesses and they have to put butts in seats. That, you know, their, their clients, their customers have to, you know, have, to, uh, have to come in and pay them. So there's, there's no advantage to being early in this process. You're, you're better off waiting and playing it cool and getting the other mm -hmm. offers and amassing your, your strategy. Uh, personally, I have at least five letters that I'm way behind on that I have to write. But, but again, it's because it's I want to be ahead of the curve. It's not because it's going to hurt the clients to, to be right. late. And there's different types of appeals to make, too. One, one is we have these other offers. Another is uh, I know that my, uh, my income looked very high from 2015, mm -hmm. but 2016, we just did our tax returns. It's a lot lower. Right. So even though it's not on the financial aid forms, I want to alert you to this new information. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's all I want to say about appeals. I feel like anyone who watches this over and over again, here, here, here's the, right. you know, the same advice. But if you have any questions and you're just joining us, you know, this is College Talk Tuesday. It's Pearl and Andy Lockwood, Lockwood College Consulting, soon to be Lockwood College Prep. Big change for us. Yes. Because we're um, widening the umbrella of college planning that we embrace. Yeah, we are um, a couple of exciting things for us. Where you know it, we, we soft launched our um, ACT and SAT tutoring, so we have a, a great tutor, Marissa, who we actually know from mutual clients, and she has now been directly working with I want to say six or seven of our of our clients, and to a T, they they've all raved about her. We just got another great um, comment from uh, Jennifer. Brown and Jerry, cool. who uh, emailed me. Okay. So, uh, so that was very cool. And um, we're op we're opening up. Uh, we we haven't really announced this, you know, but we're uh, we're opening up an office on the south shore of Long Island in, in Woodmere, which is going to be a combination of a class classroom setting for tutoring as well as just our regular financial aid and college admissions uh, mm -hmm. consulting. So that that's big for us. Okay. Uh, in terms, so again, if you. Pop in a comment if you have a question. If we don't get to it now, we'll we'll get to it, mm -hmm. you know, on uh, instant or distant replay, as the case may be. All right, the hidden place to go on a college visit. So Pearl is going up, um, maybe this weekend. I may be going. I don't know. Um, yeah. With with uh, well, I want to, but you know, we're having our ACT cram okay. course. I'm not sure if I have to be there or Marissa can handle it on her own. So we we have three spots left for a, a cram course for the ACT. The link is in this post, by the way. And uh, uh, so, so the third segment here is what's the hidden place? What do you think the hidden places to visit is on a college tour? Is it a, I, I feel like I know the answer. Is it a, I don't even need a multiple choice. Well, maybe our viewers do. Go ahead. You want me to write more? Let me ascribe my answer so that you know that I'm... Is it A, the new Starbucks? Is it B, the new Chick-fil-A? Is it C, the new dorms? Is it D, the new science building? Or is it E, some other place? It's E, some other place. And that place, yeah. I would have to say, if wrong. It, if it were me. Yeah, which it is you, yeah. <laughs> I would like to go to the Career Center and talk about what they do in the way of preparing their students uh, for internships and what 
how much accessibility do they have and preparation do they have for getting internships because the key to job placement these days, internships, internships, internships. And I agree with you. Do so you? yeah, so yeah. I think I think it's very important to find out who recruits on campus. You know what type of support they offer in terms of you know resume assistance, interviewing assistance, the internships, like all, all the above. That that is very important. Because I was, remember, not to be too simplistic and obvious, but it is a point that is often glossed over. If we are taking by averages, investing somewhere roughly a quarter of a million dollars in an undergraduate education and give or take, depending on what, yep, but that's what it is. Aren't you a little curious to know that you might get some of that back? <laughs> it's an investment. It's a good thing, right? right. So you Hopefully. should connect that a bit. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy that we should even have to identify that, but it's true. It matters. So I'll tell you a funny story. So I, I was uh, talking to um, a, a customer of ours today who uh, bought one of our, uh, our software uh, our, our software product, mm -hmm. and her name is uh, Linda. She lives up in Connecticut, and we were talking about this, you know, just this fact. Mm -hmm. Her daughter is very specific about where, you know, where she wants to go, what program she wants to. Well, she knows what program she wants to pursue. She has a pretty good idea about where she wants to go geographically, and I, and and one of the schools she was looking at is a um, small liberal arts school in Western Massachusetts. And we're talking about the, the, you know, the careers and all that. And I said to the client, I said, Linda, where did you go? She said, well, I, I went to Connecticut College. And I said, okay, that's funny. I, you know, I went to Wesleyan, which is um, you know, maybe an hour from Connecticut College. And the two of those schools plus the other one in Western Mass, are, you know, are, the three of them are pretty similar to each other. <coughs> I said to her, let me ask you this. Do you remember what the career center was like at Connecticut College? Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. And she said, yeah, I think it was like, you know, held together with like string and um, mm -hmm. you know g paper clips and whatever. And I said, yeah, I, I think at Wesleyan, the career center was was literally like a trailer out back somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. and um, but but what I went on to say was, and and we see we saw this with our own son when we, we visited another small liberal arts uh, school in Pennsylvania, that um, there's a slow fairly perceptible trend of mm -hmm. colleges bringing the career centers into the main event, into the main building, and emphasizing the stuff that Pearl just mentioned. A connectivity, because I guess <coughs> clients are demanding it more. I think that is the trend, because it's harder and harder to make a living. It's harder and harder to come out of job, out of, I'm sorry, an undergraduate institution and not move back into your parents' basement or house. Um, well, it's very easy. This is one of the things, one of the many offensive things I say at our workshops is, um, you know, there's also, it's very easy to major in stuff that employers have no interest in. So I, I make a joke. I say, you know, when's the last time, I, I say, is anyone here in human resources? And maybe, maybe I'll get one person. I said, Does anyone here hire anyone? And mm -hmm. maybe I'll get another, you know, another couple of people uh, raising their hands. And I'll say, okay, when's the last time you picked up your phone and you went, get me the women's studies major, you know, or get or get me the marine biology major or something like that. There are certain majors that are great for you know for getting jobs, and there are certain majors that are not. But in either case, you need to major in something that's good, and you need the internships that Pearl mentioned. So that that's why the career center is very important. Yes. And, and the support in general. Okay, well, I think, uh, let me just take a quick double check here for any questions or comments. I see a bunch of people on, but I don't see any comments. That's any okay. Any questions? Anything keeping you up at night? College related. College related, exactly. Yeah. So pop them into the, uh, the comments section on, uh, on replay if you, if you have something you want to ask us about. And if you're local and you're interested in a cram course for the ACT, that information is here too. Either way, we have you covered. I think we should wrap up this week's okay. College Talk Tuesday, Pearl. Sounds like a plan. And then you can go play with the extra dog. I'm so excited. Dog number three. It's a little smelly. I think we can bathe him. He was on an airplane. Ah, ew. Yeah. Okay. Right. Dog's on a plane. All right. That wraps up this edition of College Talk thanks Tuesday. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks. Pearl and Andy Lockwood signing off. And I'll be back tomorrow morning with College Coffee Talk, as Pearl says. Uh, which is every morning other than Tuesday, uh, Monday through, it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, at uh, usually about 8.30, and I'm just going through all the questions that we get. So if you have one, pop them in comments here. If not, I have enough for the next three years anyway, but uh, hopefully I'll answer one of yours that you either have or you should have. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye.